the most important factor other than time spent in the gym about how jacked and lean you're going to get is genetics. And it is a hugely, hugely important factor. And so you, you have to understand that your goals have to be referenced to what your genetic likelihood of achieving them are. The only way you'll find that out is if you work at it for a while and see what happens. But some people work at resistance training for three years. They'll accrue five pounds of muscle, burn three pounds of fat, and they'll be like, this next year, I want to gain 10 pounds of muscle. And you go, whoa, that's not how hyperbolic curves and asymptotic curves work. You got it backwards. If in three years you gain 10 pounds of muscle, in the next three years, maybe you can gain five. That's realistic. Does not work in reverse. So it's really, really important to contextualize multiple qualities. One is how much recovery and rest and relaxation time do you get compared to work and being underslept? Another is genetics and the other is age. And so if people say, I want to get more jacked and I've, the reason I'm ranting about this, uh, Peter is because I've had many clients who were willing to put in whatever work it was going to be necessary to put in, but they were older. They did not have particularly great genetics and they had already gotten most of the muscle gain that they were going to get. Not all, but most. And they requested a formulation from me of their exercise plan that would get them categorically better gains. And outside of pharmaceutical enhancement, I had to tell them in some way or another that was impossible. I ended up telling them that after many years of struggling myself to try to optimize for them and get them those gains, because I'm like, look, I'm a science guy. I know things, I think. I've been fairly successful in my own body. Why can't I get these people to gain muscle? And those, that trifecta of age, genetics, and how much of a professional bodybuilder or fitness person do you want to be for the next several months? They are the biggest factors for results. And people seem to think that you can just kind of like hack your way to the best plan. And if you just do the right things, you'll get amazing results. It has to be in context, unless you like setting yourself up for really unfortunate experiences where you get quite upset that you couldn't do the thing. People will arbitrarily assign themselves an amount of muscle they want. It does not work like that. Put in the diligence, put in the time, see how it goes. Things are going well. You can crank it up a little bit and get a little bit better gains. And just, it's going to take time. If things are not going so well, you have to optimize to make them go a little better. But there's outside of the basics, nothing you're going to be able to do that is going to be a category leap of results short of what I estimate in the early 2030s will be the, the great pharmaceutical renaissance. And then you can just turn myostatin off and get as jacked as you want. Till we get that, realism can be a, a painful pill to swallow. Well, it'll be interesting to see if, even if we can turn myostatin off as adults, if it will have the same impact that it has in the cartoons, right? Like when we look at the animals sure. that have myostatin knockouts, which are just some of the most enjoyable things to look at. Truthfully, it's like, you know, it's pleasant. our favorite things in med school, we're looking at the myostatin yes. knockout chickens and cows. Yes. Um, but it's not clear if you took a, you know, a, a mature adult um, and inhibited myostatin if you would get the same benefits. Um, but let's go back to out of the gym. One more thing we didn't discuss. I just kind of want to hear your thoughts on when, when something out of the gym is playing a role in your unjackedness. Mm -hmm. Is nutrition often a factor or is that generally not? In other words, is, is it so rare that someone is not getting enough protein or not getting enough calories that that's the problem? Is that just not something you see much? It's a thing. Okay. It's a thing. I would assume it's more a thing with women than with men um, and maybe more with older women than men and maybe even older men when you just see more anabolic resistance. All of those are true. Okay. It's not difficult to align your nutrition well. Eat mostly healthy foods. Some junk here and there is totally fine. Getting in enough protein, if you want to be real serious about optimizing your muscle gains, something like a gram per pound of protein per day. So if you weigh 150 pounds, 150 grams of relatively high quality protein. Um, if it's difficult for you to meet those goals, uh, Amazon sells uh, your bars already, don't, don't they? Uh, I don't, I don't know if, I don't think they're on Amazon yet, but they My will, wife if got not, they somehow. are, they are soon. Yeah. So get you a, a couple boxes of David bars and put them between meals. And, uh, that kind of takes care of protein. The other thing is muscle size is, um, philosophically concordant with being bigger. I know that sounds crazy, but muscles made of stuff. 
So when someone wants to be 165 pounds jacked at 150 pounds, it's curious how they think that's ever going to happen. Some people just don't eat enough. And what I would say is the biggest problem I've seen with what I assume is your target demographic for this podcast is intermittency, lack of consistency. I've had so many clients in the professional realm, older folks, folks that are practicing doctors, lawyers, so on and so forth. Tell me, hey, listen, last couple of days, every three or four hours, I've been getting in high protein meals. I've been getting good sleep. Dope. See them a week later. You go, hey, how was last weekend? They're like, well, the parts I remember were fun, I think. <laughs> then I was throwing up a lot in the toilet. And you realize that, you know, they're quote unquote good. It's not beneficial to moralize these things, but they're on track for a few days here and there. And then they fall completely off the wagon for days at a time. That is a surefire way to guarantee that you don't get very good gains is if you lack consistency. So if you want to get as jacked as possible within the realm of several months time, seek to eat enough food to get the scale to go up about half a pound per week. So if you training hard for 12 weeks, you should gain maybe six pounds or so consistent six pounds. And if you're eating a gram per pound uh, per day of protein spread into roughly three to four evenly spaced meals, roughly, very roughly, a lot of wiggle room there. That really is um, kind of all you need to know about nutrition for how to get jacked that covers probably 90% of the variance. So I'll tell you this, if you describe to me a scenario where you were training for 12 weeks, you gained seven pounds, almost every day you had a gram per pound per protein, almost every day it was three or four meals. And you're like, look, I know it's my nutrition. That's the problem. I'd be like, it's probably not. It's probably something else. That great thing about what we talked about earlier with Jordan Yates and how he could do so few sets and get so many results is that 80-20 type of rule applies to almost everything else in the human body, including nutrition. So if you're getting enough protein regularly and you're getting enough calories to gain body weight, the, if you don't get really the muscle gains that you were expecting, there aren't a lot of knobs and levers for us to pull that are going to get these enormous results, right? Um, that's kind of the situation for nutrition, but consistency is, I cannot say enough things about because you ask people, Hey, how's your diet? Especially if you're a personal trainer or a diet coach, there's this kind of halo effect situation where they want to be seen as a good person and diligent and worthy of your time. So, well, yeah, you know, like breakfast, I'll have egg whites and for lunch, I'll have a chicken sandwich and for dinner, it's usually a piece of fish. And then I have a protein shake and go to sleep. Shut up, Bob. That's one day a week, <laughs> you lying asshole. And he's like, oh, ah, damn it. You got me. <laughs> okay. That was Tuesday, but Wednesday, I don't think I ate anything until we closed that one business deal. And I got really drunk with their CMO. It was a great time. I think we had chicken fingers, but honestly, I can't remember inconsistency, especially when you're older, especially when you have lots of stress from your professional endeavors. Inconsistency is something that professional bodybuilders cannot afford. You for sure cannot afford it. Now, if you do everything right five or six days of the week and one day is kind of meh, you'll do great. But if the good days are outnumbered by the, I sure hope my trainer doesn't find out about these days, you're not doing due diligence. 